Hello there, friends. It's Miss Eliza, and for today's Elementary Maker Monday, Tales with Tales, Animals Far, we are talking about spiders. Yes, there are spiders all over the world, and the spiders that we have in Iowa are really interesting. There are also some really fascinating spiders that live in faraway places like the rainforest. They can be very colorful, they can be very big, and they move in lots of interesting ways. So we are going to try to make a project that simulates the movements of spiders. So we're going to basically create a little spider and a little spider web and see how they move. Some spiders jump, some run really fast, some swing from web to web. So we're gonna see if we can recreate that with our little paper spiders and our little string webs. So what you're gonna need to do this project is this template, and we got ours from Mystery Science, um, but there are several templates you can find pretty easily online, and it's gonna have a spider. This particular spider is a jumping spider. It's labeled right on there. Um, and it's just a single sheet of paper. And then you're gonna also want something to color your spider, so markers, crayons, whatever you have. Um, you're going to need either some little white stickers or masking tape works really great for this project too, just a thicker tape that's got a little bit of flex to it. You're going to need about five feet of string. It doesn't have to be a super precise um, length. And also that might be a really fun thing to experiment with. So you can try it with a shorter length of string um, to be kind of a medium sized spider web, but then see what happens if you do the same project with a really long piece of string. See how it changes how your spider can move. That could be really interesting, but we're gonna start with like kind of a, about five feet of string. Um, you're also going to want some scissors and then also like a stick or a ruler or just something um, for when we're doing the experiment to try to hold on to that spider web. So something that you can loop the string around to be like the stable part of the web. Okay, so for the very first step, you're going to color your spider. And I already colored mine in kind of this warning um, red and black color pattern. So you're gonna color yours however you'd like. You can be as creative as you want. And then we're gonna start putting it together. So this process has some folding and some taping and it can be a little particular. So we're gonna walk through it together, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna do this from the side so that hopefully you can see all the angles. So um, you're going to start, here's your little spider. And then what you're gonna do is flip it so that it's face down, just like that. And then you're gonna put just a blank sheet of paper right on top of it. So you've now got two sheets kind of back to back here. And then you're going to fold both of them in half on this thicker line that's on your template. So this like center line that says fold and it's kind of um, a, the darker of the two. So you're gonna fold that on in half just like that so that the print is now facing you. Right on that half fold line and just press that down really well. Okay, so we've got this folded in half. Here's our spider. And then let's put this aside for a second and you're gonna grab your string and then the stickers or the masking tape. So what you wanna do is find the end of your string. Here we go. And then you're going to um, use either the tape or the sticker to kind of make it a little tab on here. So you'll just put the string right on the middle and then fold it over on itself so that it sticks together. And it doesn't matter if you've got tape or whatever, um, as long as it sticks to itself. And then you can see we've got kind of a little tab now that we can pull the end of the string. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just put it kind of in the middle and then fold it over to make another tab. All right, so now we've got a big long string that's a loop and we've got our two tabs on the ends. Okay, so now we're gonna take our spider paper, but flip it over and you'll see you've got, it should say mystery science right facing the right way. And then there's these diagonals that say fold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of our string piece and we're gonna lay it across that fold right on that line, kind of right where it says fold, kind of lay it across there and then have the tab coming out the end a little bit. And then you are gonna just fold all four pieces of paper, because remember it's a double sheet now. So you're gonna fold all four pieces of paper over, right over on that line, 
press hard. And then when you do that, you should see that this dotted line from the other side kind of completes this little rectangle box that we have here. So now you've got a full rectangle. And that rectangle is exactly where you're gonna lay your tape or your sticker. So that's gonna make a little pocket for our string to go through, kind of like that. So let's just lay our four folded pieces down and then we'll just put our sticker right across it to kind of seal it right in place there. And then we're gonna do the very same thing on the other side. So pull the string so that most of the loop is just going out the top and then lay this piece right across that fold line. You're gonna fold all four pieces of paper over right on that fold line with the string in between. And then it's gonna kind of line up that little dotted line, lines up with the rest of the dotted line box. And then you're gonna seal that together by putting a piece of tape or a little white sticker right across all the paper onto your main template base. So now you've got two little pockets and you can see if you pull the little tabs, that they kind of slide through easily. If you get stuck at all, you might have to try it again, move your string around, make sure that it's in the pocket but not caught by that tape. Okay, so now when we started, we had that main center line that we first folded on, and then there's this second fold line right here. So that's the one that we're gonna fold now. And this is a very narrow little area, so it can be kind of hard to fold just with your hands. So a really good trick is to use a ruler or a paint stick or something like that, and line that up along your um, along that thinner line, and then kind of flip the bottom piece of that up and around your ruler. That kind of helps you get that little narrow fold in there. Um, just a little bit of a way to make it sharper. You can do it with your hands as well. It's not super critical, but once you get it started, it's kind of helpful to get it started with that ruler and then you can kind of press it into place. Very good. And then if you flip it back over, now we've got our little spider and we've got a loop that comes out of the top and two little tabs that we can move on either side. So now, we're pretty much done with making our spider, but how are we gonna make it move? All right, so this is my little spider, and you can see we've got this big, long loop of string. And then on the back, each of the little pull tabs is kind of free to move. You can kind of pull either tab. So to practice how a spider might move around, you're gonna extend the loop. So you've, I've got the tabs so I can pull those. And then if you have a friend, this is my friend, Miss Marie, and we are going to practice this together. It's a lot easier with two. So if you have something long, like maybe a ruler or we're using a paint stick here, put that right in the center of the loop and kind of wiggle the tabs down so that your spider's at the very end. Can you see, I've got my little spider here and then we've got the loop going all the way around that stick. So now the challenge is, can we figure out how to make the spider get to Marie? So if you tug on the strings, you'll see the spider moves kind of gently and slowly up towards her. And we talked about some spiders do move that way, but a lot of spiders jump or run really fast. So what do you think we should do to try to get our spider to jump? Do you have any ideas? Hmm, you could maybe try moving in short bursts, kind of like this. Oh, almost, almost made it, you didn't quite get there. And let's see what happens if we move the strings one at a time. So I'm gonna pull this one and leave this one here and then pull this one the other direction. And that one, he gets all the way up to Marie. Hmm. So you can try experimenting. There's a lot of different ways to get your spider to move. Thanks, Marie, that was really fun. So it works really well if you have um, a friend who can help you hold that loop up. If you don't have anyone with you, you can also try um, putting this around like the end of a chair or something else that's kind of sticking up just so that you can practice as well. But what you don't wanna do is probably tape it because the string does need to move back and forth. And what does that tell us about how spiders move? So spiders move around on their webs, but the webs themselves have to be flexible as well. Otherwise, they're not gonna get anywhere. So when we're pulling one side or the other side, that's helping to propel the spider as well. And if those were fully rigid, the spider could run the risk of 
falling off balance and not be able to move very precisely. They might not know the speed at which they need to move. So it's really important that that web webbing material is really flexible as well as really strong. Um, and then you can, like I said, you can practice with different lengths of string, see if you can hop your spider or pounce your spider, um, see what works best for you, how you can get your spider to move most smoothly. But that's a little bit of an experiment that shows us how spiders get around on their webs. We'll see you next week.